we have started our topic, uh, a very important topic in your course, uh, that is the gender transformation. And uh, related to this, I think uh, three or four lectures have been passed. And uh, we have done what is the gender transform and uh, what are standard gender transformations. We have also done a very important rule, that is the uh, damping rule. And uh, yesterday we have completed uh, shifting U1 to the right and shifting U1 to the left. Now, later to that, uh, let us uh, continue our class with some more example. Uh, today we shall uh, start that, uh, prove that the Z transform of the Z transform of 1 upon n factorial is equal to a function of Z that will be e raised to power 1 upon Z. And this is the new example we have which we need to prove. And uh, for proving this, uh, we shall use the uh, definition of a jet transformation. So, jet transformation of 1 over n raised to power n factorial will be summation n is 0 to infinity, the function, and jet raised to power minus n. You can open the summation now for n is 0, it will come out to be 1, for n is equal to 1. It will come out to be z raised to power minus 1 upon 1 factorial, and for n is equal to 2, it will be z raised to power minus 2 upon 2 factorial plus z raised to power minus 3 upon 3 factorial. And so on. Now, you know that uh, what is this? Uh, if you remember the formula of uh, e raised to power x and the formula of uh, e raised to power x is uh, you remember the important expansion this is a very important formula 1 plus uh, x plus x square upon 2 factorial plus x cube upon 3 factorial plus so on so we just compare this formula with this uh, uh, series so you will be able to apply the formula, you will see that the value of x is come out to be z inverse. So e raised to power z inverse will be e raised to power 1 over z. So this is we want to prove. So very important formula we are using this, the exponential series. So this is as we require. Now this is the first part of the question and in the second part we have to prove a deduction and uh, the deduction is to prove that the z transform of 1 upon n plus 1 factorial uh, we have to compute a1 and similarly we have to compute the z transform of 1 upon n plus 2 factorial by using this result of part 1. So, so for this what you will do, you will do shifting the uh, 1 upon n factorial. And what is this? This is somewhat un. Shifting un of 1 unit to the left. This is the result we have done in yesterday's class. What we shall have? We get uh, when you will shift un, uh, un is somewhat, this is a function of n. And, uh, this is your first part, and when you will shift un to the left, you will get the z transform of 1 over n plus 1 factorial is equal to z into, this was done yesterday, z transform of un. And uh, uh, actually the formula is this one. That transform of un, this is equal to small z, that transform of un minus 1. This was the formula shifting to the left. And, uh, and this is un plus 1. And this is not for un. Uh, because uh, uh, as we know, 
the jet transform of un is always a function of z this is actually standard and the, what is it is the definition that is summation n is zero to infinity un z goes to power minus n. this is the original formula so shifting un to the left one unit that will be z transform of one over n vectorial minus one so this is a small z a variable uh, we have just proved its value that is e is to power one over z minus one so this is the formula which we require now you can also do part three shifting the one more unit you can see that shifting the <coughs> one upon n factorial two units to the left two units to the left so what we shall give uh, what we shall get i just want to recall you the formula the, the formula is the jet transform of u n plus 2 that is the formula is z square u of z u of z is what uh, this is the z transform of u n and inside is u naught minus u1 z inverse this is the formula this was done yesterday's class so the z transform of 1 over n plus 2 factorial and uh, that will be equal to z square into uh, uz uz is what the z transform of u n and uh, what was this z transform that was e raised to power 1 over z minus u naught and you will be able to find out the value of u naught because we know that what is the u n in our case u n is 1 over n factorial so from uh, u naught we will be able to find out the value of u naught that will be 1 upon 0 factorial 0 factorial is always 1 so that will be 1 so you can uh, use the value here and the value is 1 minus using the formula u1 u1 will come out to be 1 again so that will be 1 into z minus so this is the second uh, standard direction which we have to get similarly if we want to get the z transform of uh, 1 over n plus 3 factorial so you can shift u1 uh, to the left three units and can get the formula and uh, the question may also come for uh, shifting the un to the right so you have to in that case you have to use the uh, formula of shifting to the right so this is the practical example of shifting to the left or shifting to the right all depends upon the formulas so we must understand what the formulas says so first of all practice uh, understand what is the formula and what is uh, it is saying and then uh, try to apply with a simple example and then go to complex so practice is very important in this case uh, okay let us continue further and, uh, we shall do a very important uh, formula that is uh, multiplication by t raised to power n or the multiplication by n rule we can also say that that is a multiplication by n rule this is a very important formula or a rule the formula is if z transform of u n we know that that is always a function of z and uh, then what we should have z transform of n into u n will be minus z dv z of u z that is a 
option of that. This is the first order derivative. And uh, you can prove this result also. This is very important formula. This is somewhat similar to the uh, formula of multiplication by t raised to power m in Laplace transformation. So, z transform of m u m, that is by definition of z transform, that is m u m z raised to power minus m. Now, what do we need? We can take minus z out and inside the summation, because we require minus z here, you can uh, write down u m into minus m into z raised to power minus m minus 1. This is the uh, adjustment of the term. And uh, what is this? This is the minus of uh, z that is the summation m is 0 to infinity. And uh, what it come out to be? v m and that is dbz of z raised to power minus m. This is the derivative term which I have written down here. So, um, further, if you want to expand it over minus z, that will be dbz of u m into z raised to power minus m. We can also write down in u m inside because it doesn't make any change. So, what is that? That will come out to be minus of z, dbz of the summation term. Summation is u n, z raised to power minus n, n is 0 to infinity. And uh, what is this? This is minus z, that will be dbz of, and this is the formula. Formula, uh, or you can say that the z transformation and z transformation of v1 is always a function of z. So, this is as we require in this formula. This is very simple to prove. So, uh, this is the result <laughs> which is very important, which can be used whenever we require. Now, let us uh, try to apply this result in questions. Find out the direct transformation of n sine of n theta. You can apply the direct uh, transformation. Uh, for this, uh, we know that uh, we can apply the rule. If we, uh, what is this? This is direct transformation of n u n. It is clear. N is n here. And what is u n? That is the sine n theta. So u n is the sine of m theta and uh, you must know the z transformation of v1 means to say that z transformation of sine m theta by the formula it was done earlier that is uh, z sine theta and that is z square minus 2 z cos of theta plus 1 this is by the formula and now we can apply this rule and, uh, and by this rule uh, we will be able to calculate or compute the other transformation of uh, n sine n theta will be uh, minus z that will be dbz of z sine theta upon z square minus 2z cos of theta plus 1. So what does it mean? We just need to find out the derivative of this function and can get the result. So it is very important to find out. And uh, let us find out its derivative. My, uh, minus of z is there, and it is clear that uh, this is the u over v formula. Let us clear. Uh, the denominator term is uh, z square minus uh, u z cos of theta plus 1 square by u over v formula. So in the numerator we should have z square minus 2 z cos of theta plus 1 to derivative of numerator with respect to z. Derivative of z will be 1. Ultimately we should have sine theta and then uh, minus uh, z sin theta into 
derivative of the numerator that is equal to z minus two t powers of two. So we need to simplify it. And, uh, let us uh, simplify it to uh, minus z. In the numerator, we should have z uh, square sine theta and z uh, square sine theta minus uh, two z sine theta. Cos of theta plus sine of theta, and that will be minus two z square sine theta, and the next term will be minus minus plus two z sine theta cos of theta. And in the denominator, we should have the same term that is here minus. So we get cos theta plus one square. If you see the numerator, these two terms are cancelled, and uh, ultimately what we should have is the term is here. That is one minus of the object, and uh, in the And numerator that is the minus two z square sine theta and that is z square sine theta. The one term will be removed as minus two and uh, at the middle we shall get minus z square sine theta. So we can uh, take the <coughs> sine of uh, theta uh, common. So uh, we should have sine of uh, theta will be common. There will be one minus z square into sine of theta. And the other denominator, the same term will be there. That is the minus two z cos theta plus one whole square. Now, if we can uh, adjust the negative sign, that will be more easier. Z into z square minus one. Into sine theta and the denominator. That is z square minus two z cos of theta plus one whole square. I think it is a solution. So this is the required z transformation by multiplication with angles. So it is very important to do the question. So. Uh, Suppose now I am going to do the extension of the rule, or you can note that. Please make a note of it that if we have a jet transformation, we have done the rule that jet transformation of n u n that is minus j d v j of u of j. This is what we have done. Now. If we have one more n, we need to select n square. Then what we need to do that will be minus of uh, <coughs> z square. It will depend on the power of n, and uh, that will be d square by d j square of of j. Similarly, we can. Uh, I don't the formula for n is equal to for three also or for four also. So in general, for uh, we can write down the formula in general. That is n the base to power n square. That is equal to n. So that is minus z the base to power n. And n is the other derivative of the unit of z. So we can do the question in any of this form by using the general form. Okay. Similar to that, we have this rule now. Uh, we have this question even uh, very important example. We just need to find out the general transformation of n square into e raised to the power n theta. And uh, 
we know the formula of the gravity transform of P goes to part m theta. It was done in a yesterday's class that is z over z minus p goes to part theta. And uh, therefore, by this, <coughs> by the second rule, uh, because here r is two, so you can apply the second rule, and that will be minus of z square, and it puts a double order derivative with respect to z of u of z, and z minus z over z minus p goes to part. So that is z square, and uh, what we shall do. We shall find out the first order derivative first. Then we can be able to find out the second order. So let us find the uh, first order derivative. That is, z minus p is to part theta a square. Z minus p is to part theta into one minus z into one. Uh, let us try uh, to. And make it more simple. That is the z square. That is maybe what we should have. And the z of uh, that is the z will be cancelled. That will be e raised to power theta over z minus e raised to power theta whole square negative sign. So this is the term left with us. And see what we are doing. We are finding the derivative. One order derivative has been computed. Now we can compute the second order derivative. We will observe the fraction. We see that in the numerator we have minus e raised to power theta, and it is independent of the variable z. So you can take it uh, outside of the derivative term. So ultimately it will be taken to the numerator and find out the derivative. Now I am going to compute the derivative. That is in minus two. Z minus p is to power theta is to power minus p into derivative of this bracket term will be one. So that will be written as minus two minus plus two z square in this to power theta and z minus p is to power theta whole cube. So this is the final derivative term. So <coughs> we are uh, able to compute the derivative. So, in this way, we can apply the multiplication with the n rule in any of the power, whether the power is n is equal to one or n is equal to two or n is equal to three. Now, for practice, you can take n power three here and compute the question. Or you can take any other uh, function u n in place of e to the power n theta and practice practice the question. So now let us uh, continue with a uh, uh, more example. The question is: Suppose we have, uh, suppose we want to compute. Uh, let us take uh, the question from the book uh, that is. Uh, Get the transform of n square into p is to part n. So it is clear we should require what is this un? Un is e is to part n. So you can write on here un is e is to part n, and the get the transformation of un we require by the help of formula. And uh, what we should have here, uh, uh, we have uh, e raised to power n theta. This one. 
So in place of e raised to the power n theta, we have e raised to the power a n. <coughs> Sorry. So the jet transformation of e raised to the power a n will be jet over jet minus e raised to the power a n. So now we can apply the uh, rule and uh, we can get uh, therefore the jet transformation of n square e raised to the power a n. Minus one uh, minus of uh, z square and that will be double order derivative with respect to that of z over z z minus e raised to power t. The question is uh, similar to that. Just in place of e raised to power theta, we should have e raised to power t. Now I leave it here. You factorize it and form. I leave the question. One more question we can do. Suppose we have the question is if the jet transform of u of n is equal to z over z minus one plus z over z square plus one, uh, then what we need to do? We need to find out the jet transformation of u n plus one. And uh, this is clear. That is shifting to the left. So by applying the rule of shifting to the left, uh, therefore uh, you can write on u n plus one, and the formula is z over z um, into u of z. If we remember the formula, and the formula was mentioned in the page. You just see. this is the formula we have. Z transformation of u n plus one, that is z into z transformation of u n minus one. Now uh, this formula is applicable here, so you can apply the formula and that will be minus one. Now uh, that is z into z over z minus one plus z over z square plus one. That is minus. Now you just make a simple computations and get the result. And uh, one more thing I can explain here that you can also compute the z transformation of u n plus two, and that will be shifting u n uh, two units to the left. And in that case, the formula will be z in u of z minus u naught minus u one z. Like that formula, not in general. It is also very simple to do. So, let us move further. We have a very important result, or very important theorem, even that is initial value theorem and final value theorem. These are very important theorem in the. Topic of a general transformation. So, initial value theorem, and the next will be final value theorem. And what is its statement? If the general transformation of e u n, and uh, we know that what is that? That is the always be a function of u n, and then. This is the theorem that u of naught is always a limit of z approaches to infinity u of z. Remember, this is the first term given, and uh, we can prove the result <coughs> by writing down the expansion u of z. You know that what is the u of z? That is z transformation of u of n, and uh, what is by the formula that is the u n z raised to power Minus n and it is equal to infinity. That is u naught plus u one to the power minus one to u two to the power minus two and so on. So this is the series we have, and uh, from this series, if we take, if we see, we can arrive on the series like this. It is a very important uh, result and a very easy result. That is one over the square plus two one after infinity. 
Now it is clear that uh, whensoever you take the Lenmatter Jack approaches to infantile view of Jack, this is the view of Jack, this strategy, this is the one to take, then what will be the right hand side? And that is 1 upon infinity, and 1 upon infinity is 0, this is also 1 upon infinity is 0. Then all the terms will be vanished, only the first term will be left with us. So that is the view now. So, this is very important and very easy to prove. Now, from this result, we can also find out uh, some more result. Uh, U1 is equal to Lenmatter Z approaches to infinity, and uh, that will be equal to Z into U of Z minus U naught. And uh, what was that? This is the u n plus one. You remember this is your u n plus one. It will remember n approaches to infinity and the data transformation of u n plus one will always be equal to u one. And uh, similar to that, we can also write down the theorem in this way also. For the third term u two that will be a limiter z approaches to infinity and uh, that will be z square that is the u of the z minus u naught minus u1 z plus and uh, this is the limiter z approaches to infinity sorry, this z approaches to infinity z approaches to infinity and uh, that will be z transformation of the we can we can find out the respective term. The first term of the series is u naught equal to this number, u1 is equal to this number, and u2 is equal to this number, and so on. We can also expand it and find out the remaining terms of the series. So this is your uh, initial value theorem, and uh, we also have another value theorem it is also very important result the result is a z transformation of u n is always a function of z then the limit z approaches to infinity and approaches to infinity given limit in this case, the limit to the n approaching to infinity, u n is always equal to the limit of z approaches to 1, z minus 1 into v of z. This is the final value theorem. And uh, we have to prove this result. Uh, it is very important. By definition, by definition of the z transformation and the transformation of uh, u n plus 1 minus u n and that will be equal to uh, summation n put into 0 to infinity that is u n plus 1 minus u n and z plus minus n and uh, that will be equal to uh, left hand side will be we can use it by linear property and z transform of u n plus 1 and z transform of u n. I can cite it same as it is summation n equal to infinity u n plus 1 minus u n that goes to power minus n. Now uh, we can uh, write down therefore the z transformation of u z minus u naught this is the uh, term u this is the formula even this is the formula for z transformation of u n plus 1 this is me uh, shifting one unit to the left so that is the z transformation and uh, what is the z transformation of u n that is a simple function of the z and the right hand side will be same that means 0 to infinity u n plus 1 u n z raised to the minus f n now uh, what 
what is that uh, you can create z comma inside to use z minus uh, use a even comma not z the limits as z approaches to 1 because you just see the right hand side of the theorem that is limit z approaches to 1 z minus 1 gz so that is why we are taking the limit z approaches to 1 and uh, what it come out to be that is z minus 1 into z of z as it is and this will be remember z approaches to 1 mean that will be u naught into 1 is uh, u naught and uh, on the right hand side uh, you can uh, do the value that is summation m is equal to infinity u n plus 1 minus of u n and uh, that is uh, z approaches to 1 so uh, this is this will be one. So ultimately you can <coughs> open the submission now and after opening the submission we will have for n equal to zero v1 minus v naught plus v2 minus v1 plus v3 minus v2 plus so on and the last term will be Vn plus 1 minus v after opening the summation and uh, you just see on the left hand side here that is when z approaches to 1 z minus 1 v of z and this uh, minus v naught is there and this minus v naught will be cancelled with this minus v naught one minus u1 is on the both on both the sides. And one more thing, u1 will be considered the negative u1, u2 will be considered the negative u2, u3 will be considered the next negative u2. So ultimately, uh, what we are left with? Uh, we are uh, left with that, that is uh, u and u. This will come out to be this will come out to be the matter and approaches to infinity and that will be equal to u n plus one minus of Term will be left with us because uh, the previous term to this will be this one. If we have this term, the uh, previous term to this uh, that will be equal to u n minus u n minus one. This will be the previous term, and uh, that u n will be cancelled with this. Only you are left with u n plus one. So what is that? This will come out to be u infinity and n approaches to infinity. So this is the result. So this is the limit of z approaches to 1, z minus 1, u, z. And uh, this is the u infinity. u infinity can also be written in this way. Limit n approaches to infinity, u n. So this is the final value here. 
So by this way, we can prove the result. It is very easy, and uh, we shall uh, continue our class in the next lecture and uh, do some examples. Thank you very much.